outside door is ready to dispatch two windrift indicators, which were yellow and red uh, tissue paper. But as they fly over now, it's coming across. Okay, they set off, set, the two, one, back, there you go. So there's windrift indicators. So these are two streamers, got the American Dutch coolers. Okay, we call them windrift indicators. There. Uh, but they are made out of tissue paper, so they are completely biodegradable, so please don't worry if they do land on anyone's houses or gardens, they will disappear after a few rainfalls. So while those are going down, probably I can't see them anymore, but they should have landed by now. Uh, the aircraft is now circling up to to the TSA uh, for having us here. Behind him, we have Lance Corporal Anthony Highland, who will be flying the army flag. And you'll also have Lance Corporal Cameron Gibson, who's on a slightly different colour canopy. Yeah, that's how you can tell he's part of the RLC Silver Star. So here we go, of course, they are doing a few turns, a few twists, flying the TSA flag with the spoke. Army. And we like to point that out by flying an army flag, just so everyone knows, even though our uniforms do look blue. So here comes Short Lady Run to give it a big cheer. He's set the pad, he's coming into land. And there is nice soft landing there on the beach. It's a bit breezy on the beach. And there he is, right next to the sea. What a fantastic landing there from the pool and Anthony Highland. And last but no means least from the free fall group. Okay, we have Lance Corporal Cameron Gibson flying a Union, a Union Jack leg flag, which is uh, attached to his risers, coming in, nice little turn there, and is he going to hit the team? Oh, slightly over, that is Eric, Private Matthew Box, right, and Private Will Sims. They're adjusting the formation now, and they're turning in, and in any second now, they're going to do what's called a down play. They're going to bring it back into the arena. They're going to point their canopy straight to the ground and then they're going to accelerate very rapid on the canopy. This is probably one of the most dangerous things in parachuting you should never dive out. And down they go. Their canopy faces to the ground and then they are accelerating like a rocket, shooting down to the beach. Three, two, one, snap! And then they split, except in the landing pattern. And here they come in, please give them a big round of applause. Yeah, right, Jacob Jackson, last one down, last one, no means lead. And apparently he's a 10-year-old that is currently undergoing flight training in a Piper PA-28. So, if I'm right, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've got to be 16 to, to get your PPL. I mean, you can do the flight training, but you can move on. But right now, if you look in front of us, arriving from crowd right, it is Team Raven in the RV8. Now the RV8, as I say, is all known as a home-built aircraft. It is highly aerobatic and uh, really good fun. It's a two-seater, although it doesn't look like it. They're not on the same level like the Edge 540s or the extra 300s, but they still, as we see, have a decent G limit and aerobatic ability. Now you can see as the aircraft go out, they break up. Teams one and two, so he's also a QFI, a qualified flying instructor, and Hawk, Grob tutor for the University of Squadron. Uh, he also serves as a part time reservist for the QFI, uh, the University of Wales Squadron in St. Athens, so he's sort of semi retired. Six years uh, as a display pilot. He also did a lot of flying in the uh, Yak 52s. And four ship back. Maybe two or three seconds before the carburetor starts to free up. So they head back towards the main group. Here comes the team of four twirling around the outside. Number seven is rotating aileron rolls around the smoke. Three, four, and five. So as well as a successful businessman, he's also, as you can see, a very keen pilot. 25 years and over 2,000 hours on his license, so he's not just a sportsman. Get your cameras ready now. The team Raven come back in, pitching the aircraft up, like combing engine, and up into the split. 
Raven number seven is Mark Southern. He's currently training captain with Thomas Cook, flying the A3. There's not much that he hasn't flown. Hunters, Strike Masters, Albatross, Nat. Uh, he also flew with the Global Aero Stars. I remember that, Aerobatic Stars. And Chris is uh, recognized. So they're heading straight at us. As I said, it's an on-crowd wind. And you can see the wind, how it's blowing the smoke away. Now watch as they break into star. And the minute they turn around into a barrel roll, rolling the aircraft out, giving the shape of a barrel in the sky, before correcting, and now, there they go, they peel off, that's a nice maneuver. So, three, four, five moves out to the right, that leaves the arena into the into the wind. But once they pitch up and catch that wind, it'll blow them back and then blow it out. And this is a gift from Team Raven to everybody here in Torbay. It's a heart. And here comes the arrow for the love of British Airships. Here comes three, four, and five, We're rolling over the top. We're lined up, and they're stacking on top of each other. Smoke going on. Very nice. Rolling out. That is very good. They make that look very easy, but trust me, ladies and gentlemen, with this weather, this on the south pier. Now, he's already got the aircraft in a sort of stall, so he's pitched the nose up and uh, just drifting along. Now, this is actually where the wind can help it. Because the wind is moving quite fast, it'll generate lift. And the aircraft doesn't have to move forward that much. Now this all sounds very normal for the time being. So the aircraft coming through, cross control. But there you go. That's not a noise you should normally hear coming out of the pit. That is absolutely unique. <laughs> He's not using the jets all the time, he's just introducing them when he's either going into the vertical. So the upper wing has also been totally redesigned. He's done a lot of mods on it. Aeroworks did a, a job on it. It's tested. Uh, obviously all the modifications have been fully tested and certified by the CAA. So yeah, you see when you going into the vertical then you can hear the jets coming in. It's also got a lot bigger ailerons, remember I was talking about these control surfaces, and the more wing area gives it an amazing roll rate. The actual wing roll is soft. because uh, normally they go like normal G-forces where you'd be pushed back into the seat while he was pulling, pushing out there upside down he's actually being pulled out of the seat so again, great display of uh, 
platform as well, unlike uh, a lot of helicopters you see today where the undercarriage is spread out, you can see that it's uh, four permanent uh, landing gear, it makes it very stable in rough seas, landing on the back of the frigate and the destroyers. Just uh, hold off on that. These aircraft are also very popular with special air services. Uh, you might remember the Iranian hostage siege in London. It was these aircraft that were used to deploy the SAS on the top routes. So the diminutive size makes it popular because they're not very loud uh, compared to the other bigger the West coming into its own and aircraft carriers in particular it was beginning to dawn on the planners wow battleships are dead and aircraft carriers are the new battleships because uh, these, uh, these aircraft were instrumental in, uh, in bringing that around and what they wanted was a very steady platform that could take these very large torpedoes you can see the torpedo underneath the swordfish biplane as well it gives it a lot of lift so that means it's got very good slow, what we call slow flight characters. Put it all together, it was uh, replacing a uh, aircraft called the Greek uh, Fairly, the uh, Mark III F aircraft. It was originally known as the TSOR, or Peter Spotter Reconnaissance. So it's like a linen cover, so you can imagine. So think about it, every thousand feet that you go up, you lose two degrees of heat as well. So if you're flying up at 10,000 feet today, it's near freezing, it's near zero up there. So you've got zero protection from the elements and you're out over the sea as well. So it's not very comfortable. Three to wait back at it. Running from right to left, he's gonna head on back to Yerbleton. Thanks again. the iconic engines as they make their initial approach to display it for you here today. beautiful aircraft flying today is down to the incredible Amazingly, Margaret managed to hang on and the pilot safely landed the aircraft. Neither Margaret, the pilot, or the aircraft were harmed. Hurricane PZ-865, a very special aircraft, was the last Hurricane to be built rolling off the Hawke. Enjoying the show today, and Ben Haggard and Megan Ryan Lanyard for attending their first ever English Riviera Air Show. Recently moved down to Torquay from St. Helens, and they're loving the Devon life. Who would?
So now look to your left, ladies and gentlemen. Up in the vertical is the Yak 50, and at the control is uh, Paul, Paul Farmer. And the Yak 50 is a uh, highly aerobatic aircraft that was built originally uh, for an organization called DOSAP. And DOSAP is like the equivalent of the University Air Squadron for the Soviets. And they can take a lot of punishment. If you get to look underneath the aircraft, you see a sort of semi retractable undercarriage. This would help in the event of a wheels up land. Very strong. Now watch as he uh, comes straight through in front of us, pitches the nose down, building up a bit of speed. Remember what I was saying about the training off the speed? for maneuverability and then pitches the aircraft up into the vertical, coming around and rolling the aircraft out in half Cuban and then back into its own smoke trail. It was a very successful uh, export for the uh, Russians. Uh, the Ukrainian Air Force used them a lot as has the Soviets and Lithuania as well. The aircraft served with the National Aerobatic Team, a lot of them as well. You can normally see them all flying together, but the aircraft uh, today is in the hands of Paul Farmer. Ladies and gentlemen, the OB-10 Bronco. Manifested for many, many years after the Vietnam War. It served in the Cold War and also went to the First Gulf War as well, Operation Set and Shields. And, uh, it's actually quite a large aircraft. Once you get up close to it, it's 100 miles. Now this is the German variant. Uh, it's served with the Luftwaffe. Uh, it's called an ob 10 b normally with uh, cannon fire. So because it was such a powerful and steady platform, it made the perfect target shot. So they were equipped with steel cable, which that was inside a clear dome so that the winch operator would lie down and he would be able to feed out uh, the cable with the target tug on the back. So following 20 years of uh, working with the Luftwaffe, the Bronco was finally replaced by the SOC and not at the OB-10. And look, you can see how agile it is. That's a great railway, such a big aircraft. Big, huge, straight wing gives it really good slow flight characteristics as well. Very low slow door speed. Everybody put your hands in the air. Okay, put your hands in the air. Okay, that is awesome. Sorry, mate. Let me try and find your Hands in the air. Let's start clapping. Okay, let's get a nice wing. Here we go. Last trick on the show. We're going Now that's the sound you can use as a ringtone for your phone on a uh, aircraft carrier. The initial batch of sea fires began being provided in uh, 1941. So we were already a couple of years into the war by then. We needed to work out how they could uh, slow the aircraft down on approach. It's, uh, normal land based Spitfires, they come in pretty hot, they're doing a barrel rate of knots, so you'd have to increase the flaps, 
obviously the power uh, of the engine as well is uh, going to help you there. That's so to speak, but from 1942 onwards, this will see further active service during the Korean War. Provided hundreds of missions to ground attack and combat air patrol uh, in North Korea. That together with the Mustangs and Corsairs is a very popular option for the uh, UN forces. It's a service with the Navy in 46. 53, she was transferred down to the Royal Naval Air Station in Bramcott, the ground construction airframe. And then she retired from uh, Navy service in 1955. But then back in 1973, the fuselage and the parts were discovered in a scrapyard. Can you believe that? <laughs> Look at it now. The aircraft changed. This aircraft, it is immaculate. You uh, are lucky enough to have a look inside the cockpit. It is like it's just rolled off the factory. It is an amazing rebuild. Head of aviation, Navy wings. You'd be very proud to be displaying this aircraft. That is truly of national historical importance. Red 1. 
which means that they're not taken off just necessary to purchase the modern fifth generation F-35. Get your cameras ready for the lightning roll. Team roll to left on the far right hand side is Red Four, Flight Lieutenant Ollie Suckling. Ollie again is in his first year on the team, a former Tornado GR4 pilot and former qualified flying instructor on the Hawk Team R2. Those familiar to air shows will also know Ollie Suckling as a former member of the North Wales based Strike Master Pair. begin their roles around the rest of the formation. Of course, Red One doesn't want to make it too easy for the rest of the team, so as it comes right, the smoke colour comes on and makes the 7 and 8 work even harder as he puts the aircraft into a right-hand turn. You may be able to see the small door at the back of the aircraft underneath is called the air brake. We fly the air brake out in this manoeuvre as it causes the throttle this causes a hotter engine gas temperature. The detonator. The Hawk Team Mark 1 can fly above 40,000 feet and it can achieve a get about 100 feet, 800 miles an hour close, they will pass within 100 feet of each other. Each aircraft performing an aileron roll, changing their smoke to white. Give me a massive round of applause for 
And eight rolled around the smoke. Red seven at the front, smoking blue, is flight attendant Stu Roberts. He's in his second year on the team. A red two from last year, and a former Typhoon pilot with 11 and 12 squadrons at Aria Connix B. Smoke blue and roll around the red smoke of red six. For the final time, Hannah makes their break. Red 6 off to our left hand side and Red 7 off to our right. Once again they will come up to approximately 1,000 feet before they descend. Red smoke on, he rolls around the rest formation, leaving the infinity symbol in the sky for the infinity break. But Peyton, it's been a wonderful experience. Please put your hands together for the 2023 The Red Arrow! Thank you. 